Hello Panoramic Travels viewers, Steve here. Thank you for joining me on the Panoramic Travels channel where we discuss our travels, whether they're by RV, river or ocean cruising or independent travel. We picked up our Panoramic RV, Harvey the RV, in September of 2022. This is our seventh major RV trip, hence season seven. This season will have three episodes. This one from an RV on the road perspective, episode two, the three days at the amazing third annual Panoramic RV gathering, and episode three, an interview that my wife conducted with Panoramic President Philippe Marcotte. I'll put links to the videos in the description below. I'd like to take a moment and mention that around 85% of Panoramic Travels viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So if you haven't subscribed, I'd like to ask you to take a moment and click on the subscribe button. If you like the video, please click the like button too. That will help get these videos in front of more potential viewers and will get me closer to my goal of a thousand subscribers. Thanks. Okay, back to the video. This is a nine day all boondocking road trip from our home in southeastern Michigan to a number of places in Canada for Janet to do some ancestry research, the panoramic gathering and a visit to the mothership in Chambly, Quebec to get a little work done on Harvey. And since this is an all boondocking road trip, I'll include an analysis of our tank levels and battery level at the end of this episode, so stick around for that. We're all packed. We're heading out with the fresh tank at 90%, the gray tank at 0%, the black tank at 10%, propane at 94%, and the battery state of charge at 95%. But again, we'll look at that more at the end of this episode. And we're on the road. Southeastern Michigan is, I think, the only place in the United States where you can drive south and end up in Canada. Look at a map. How do you get from Detroit to Windsor? By driving south. Like the Journey song, Don't Stop Believing, with the lyrics, Born and Raised in South Detroit. Do you know what South Detroit means? South Detroit is Windsor. But that's not the most direct way to get to Wallaceburg. The most direct way is to drive to Algonac, Michigan, and take the ferry across the U.S.-Canadian border to Walpole Island. Once we cross the border, it's only about 15 minutes to Wallaceburg, Ontario. So why Wallaceburg? Janet has a lot of ancestors on her mother's side that were French Canadian, some of whom moved to Wallaceburg. Janet made plans before the trip to meet with the president of the Wallaceburg and District Museum, Henry Van Heeren. The museum is closed on Mondays, but Henry agreed to open the museum and help Janet with her research for a few hours. While Janet can trace her maternal grandfather, Laporte side of her family to no safe France back to the early 1600s, she knew nothing about her maternal grandmother, Dubois side of the family, before her grandmother. As it turns out, her grandmother had two half-siblings. While Janet and Henry dug into old Wallaceburg records, I went through part of the museum. I discovered that Wallaceburg is known as the glass town of Canada. During the late 1800s, as the lumber trade was in decline, Captain William Taylor, a local resident who grew up near a glass factory in England, opened the Sydenham Glass Company. He planned to use nearby sand deposits, but when he found out that the local sand was not suitable for glass, he imported, ironically, sand from southeastern Michigan, where the deposits are among the best in North America for glass manufacturing. The next stop is the Riverview Cemetery to visit the grave site of some of Janet's ancestors. We found records that there are five family members buried here, even though only three names are listed on the gravestone. Janet's great-grandfather is buried here, his sister and brother-in-law are on one side of the gravestone, and Edith Dubois, who died at the age of 18, is on the other side of the gravestone. We haven't figured out who Edith is yet. Hector, Janet's grandmother's half-brother, is also buried here. The next stop is the Wallaceburg Library. We searched through physical records and records on reels of microfiche. As I went through the Wallaceburg death records, I was struck by the number of pneumonia and influenza deaths starting in 1918, apparently Wallaceburg residents who died of the Spanish flu. 
Okay, we're done in Wallaceburg and it's time to head further northeast into Canada. We spent the night at the Dutton, Ontario en route. If you're traveling in Ontario and boondocking, the en route rest areas are great. They typically have gas stations, restrooms, fast food restaurants, a convenience store, and large parking lots. Today we're driving to Campbellville, Ontario to visit our friends Roland and Ray. We met them in 2019 on our first Viking River cruise, the Grand European Cruise. Roland and Ray were both geologists, but now I'd say they're art collectors. Ray is herself an artist, and we got to see a lot of her original paintings as we got a tour of their house. We went on a nice hike on the Crawford Lake trails. The park has replicas of native longhouses and a lot of nice wood carvings. Tonight we're boondocking at the Vaughan Ontario Walmart, just north of Toronto. We have a big day tomorrow. Today we're driving to the Archives of Ontario to do more of Janet's ancestry research. We put in a full eight hour day going through dozens of microfiche reels. Unfortunately, we didn't find much new information. Janet filled out a Freedom of Information request to get more information about her great-grandmother. We're heading to the Port Hope en route. We saw a few truck drivers drive down the car lane. They were able to drive through and get to the truck area without a problem. For some reason, this truck driver thought he had to back up all the way to the truck lane. He definitely provided us with some entertainment. Today we're getting a tour of the Sir James Whitney School for the Deaf. Both of Janet's maternal grandparents were deaf and went to this school from 1911 to 1923. Then they got married and had three children, one of whom was Janet's mom. Janet had made plans in advance to meet with Donna Fano. Donna was an art teacher at the school for several decades and is now the archival technician and museum director. She has spent the last five years finding unused sections of the school where she has set up the museum. I think a lot of the school's history would have been lost if not for her labor of love. The most surprising thing we learned is that from 1870 to sometime in the 1960s, including when Janet's grandparents were there, the students were not taught or allowed to use American Sign Language. The school taught vocalization and lip reading. The students taught themselves ASL when they were in their dormitories. We're driving to a flying jay to dump the gray and black tanks and fill the fresh tank. Unfortunately, they didn't have potable water, but directed us to the Greater Napanee Water Facility. Apparently, we needed an adapter to connect to their potable water source. Not having that adapter, we just held our garden hose to the water source, even though a lot of the water sprayed out. We did this long enough to get our fresh tank to 81%, since our arms were getting pretty tired. Next, we're driving in a major downpour to a harvest host for dinner and to spend the night. It was raining too hard last night to notice, but this morning we discovered another panoramic in the harvest host parking lot. So we knocked on the door and met John and Sue from New York. We're already making new friends before we even get to the gathering. We're now arriving at the gathering location, the Recreo Park in St. Catharines, Quebec, located on the St. Lawrence River. The gathering will be the subject of Season 7, Episode 2, 
So I'm going to skip ahead to when we're leaving the gathering the morning of day seven. We're leaving the gathering and heading to the mothership, the Chambly, Quebec Panoramic Factory. We're spending the night and getting a few minor repairs made in the morning, as are a few other piano people. We got to spend some time with our friends Joe and Bernie from Ohio under their awning. With the repairs made, we said goodbye to new friends and the panoramic staff. We're on our way home. We used to take the 401 through Toronto, but now we always take the 407. Yes, the 407 is a somewhat expensive toll road, but it saves us at least half an hour of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic going through Toronto on the 401. We're spending the night at the Cambridge en route. We're heading home today. Before we get home, we'll stop at a local campground to dump our gray and black tanks and fill our freshwater tank so we'll be ready to go for our next trip. The temperatures were mild and we didn't need to run the AC. You can see that as long as we're driving every day, the battery state of charge was between 86 and 100%. The only time the state of charge dipped down was when we weren't driving and the solar panels didn't generate much electricity because of how cloudy it was. Again, the temperatures were mild and we didn't need to use any propane to heat the RV. We only used propane to heat water for showers and to cook a few meals. As I've said before, even though the sea level 2 tank monitor reads to the nearest whole number, you can't really go by that. Yes, it's a lot better than monitors that read out in one-third increments or one-quarter increments, but you can see in the graph that propane levels sometimes go up. This could be an inaccuracy in the monitor or could also be temperature and or pressure related. This graph is pretty self-explanatory. You can see freshwater decreases until we fill and the gray and black tanks increase until we dump. Again, you can see some slight inaccuracies in the readings. I'd say the sea level 2 tank monitor readings are good to about plus or minus 5. I'll put links to the other videos in this series in the description of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a like if you do and consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.